Mayor Carnes, Superintendent Terry Danger Dangerfield, the city officials, councilmen, and um, members of the community, Lincoln Park High School faculty, staff, and students. Welcome to the State of the School and the State of the City Address. The Lincoln Park Rotary is pleased to have this organization and host this event, this very successful event, coming together for our great city of Lincoln Park. I'm proud to introduce our Lincoln Park City Attorney, Ed Zelnick. He will be the Master of Ceremonies this afternoon. And again, thank you for attending. Thank you, and we have many elected and appointed officials of both the school district and the city of Lincoln Park in the audience. Would you all stand just so we know where you are and we may see you now, and then please take your seat and remain silent through the program. Thank you all for your continued support. More primarily and more importantly, we thank the families of those who run for office, for those who serve, those appointees, and those who work for the community and for the school district for sharing your relative with us, your relatives with us, to help us do the job here of keeping this city moving forward. And for all of us who have gone to Lincoln Park High School, it's a privilege to be either on stage or in the audience of what is still the greatest auditorium at Down River. The school district has done a great job of maintaining this, and it clearly should be utilized more because it's acoustically, performance-wise, and seat-wise, the best Down River. And I think the school district deserves a round of applause for that. And let's open it for more plays and more concerts. And Mr. Dangerfield, more band music in the future. The City of Lincoln Park and the School District are working on a combined effort now of joining resources, joining facilities, joining structures, and joining thought. The old word was synergy, and now it's just mutual cooperation for survival in the City of Lincoln Park. And we're doing a doggone good of that job here today, and that's why you're joining us here in this tremendous auditorium in one of the greatest high schools in the world. Many alum here, including those on stage and those in the audience who went to high school and stayed in the community and continued to give back to their community. To welcome you all, to start with an invocation for prayerful thought for what's taking place here today, please welcome the Reverend Carrie Hildebrandt, pastor of the Lincoln Park Presbyterian Church. Let us pray. Creator of all that is good, look upon and visit all the cities of the earth and ours, Lincoln Park. Renew the ties of mutual regard that form our civic life. Send us honest and able leaders. Help us to eliminate poverty, prejudice, and oppression. That peace may prevail with goodness and justice with order. And that men and women from various cultures and with differing talents may find with one another the fulfillment of their humanity. Bless those who hold office in the government of this city that they may do their work in a spirit of wisdom, kindness, and justice. Help them use their authority to serve faithfully and to promote the general welfare. Be with your people where they work. Make those who carry on the industries and commerce of this city responsive to your wisdom. And to all of us, give pride in what we do and a just return for our labor. Watch over the ways of business so that those who buy or sell get or lend, may live justly and show mercy, and walk in your ways. May profits be fair and contracts kept. In our dealings with each other, may we display true charity. We commend our neighborhoods of Lincoln Park to your care, that they might be kept free from social strife and decay. Give us strength of purpose and concern for others, that we may create here a community of health. Be with those who study, Give them curiosity, imagination, and patience enough to wait and work for insight. Creator of wisdom, make each of us an instrument of goodness. Bless us and our differences and undergird our courage to stand together. We call on you today to gather us in your love. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Hildebrand, and put this date in your book for two years from now, too and for next year and the year after. Very eloquently put for what we need in the community because it's all about civic engagement. We thank the other civic clubs, the other fraternal groups that have joined us here today because we know that it's getting harder and harder and tougher and tougher to get people out there to volunteer and help with the community. And Reverend Hildebrand will be sharing some of our ideas with the mayor after the address today. And we thank you all, the Rotary, the Exchange, the other clubs that are here today for what they do. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. For the presentation of colors, we welcome Sergeant Major Menzies 
and the Lincoln Park High School Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps with their color guard. Please remain standing, ladies and gentlemen. Please remain standing for the national anthem. Let's show our thanks for the Lincoln Park High School Junior ROTC. I know we promised short speeches, but take your seats anyways, ladies and gentlemen, please. Lincoln Park High School has had a great tradition of not only education, community outreach, inclusion in the well-being of the city of Lincoln Park, but they've had a tremendous music, arts, fine arts and entertainment program here for a long, long time. And those of us who played back in the great stage bands of the 60s and 70s, remember those halcyon days where the high school band was recording records and selling records, created a great many careers for many people out of Lincoln Park, a great home of music and arts and sound. And I'm only saying that because Terry Dangerfield was a great band instructor before he became a great superintendent. Please welcome the superintendent of Lincoln Park School District, Terry Dangerfield. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to the mayor, city council, Lincoln Park Board of Education, our community, and the Lincoln Park Rotary Club for your support of this event. Uh, welcome to our beautiful high school auditorium, as Mr. Zelnick said, uh, right here inside the amazing Lincoln Park High School. Uh, as a former teacher in this building and on this stage, I have a special place in my heart for this facility, and I am so pleased that each of you were able to join us uh, this afternoon. This is a great opportunity and platform for myself and Mark, Mayor Carnes to be able to update you on the status of our fine city and this school district. The state of the Lincoln Park School District is good, but more importantly, we are on a path to be great. This path includes going forth and reaching our vision 
of being a high-performing school district that meets the needs of all of its students, a school district that is respected by its community, a school district that represents pride, excellence, hope, and success. In order to know what path we needed to get on, we had to analyze our system. In beginning this process, we established three questions that needed to be answered. What do we know that we do well? What are our challenges? And more importantly, what are we going to do about it? The goal was to answer these questions so that we could develop a plan that would allow the Lincoln Park Public Schools to meet the expectations that I and the Lincoln Park Board of Education have for our school district. The expectations that our parent and parents and community have of us. To meet the moral and fundamental obligation that we as educators have to ensure that our students receive a high quality, well-rounded, and relevant education. So the first question we asked, what do we know that we do well? We know that we want to ensure that all of our students get the well-rounded education we can provide. They deserve that. The desire is evident in our buildings. This district wants the best for all of its students. There is a culture of compassion here in Lincoln Park for our kids. The Lincoln Park Public Schools is a district that recognizes that we have to do better, and thank goodness, we want to get better. We know that we have amazing people working with our students. This includes staff, parents, and volunteers. Often I am asked what is LP's best quality, and I without reservation say it's our people. They put, for, put forth a tremendous effort on behalf of our students. It is very common to see our staff members at after school events or supporting a student after school. Our staff members care about our students, this district, and the success of our school system. We have amazing parents and volunteers that give unselfishly of themselves over and over again. From evening events to the day-to-day -day operations, we have parents and community members that have a presence in our school classrooms and hallways. There's an old saying that it takes a village to raise a child, and I can tell you that here in Lincoln Park, the village that we have in place has laid a solid foundation by which we are going to build the new Lincoln Park Public Schools. Because of this, together, family, hopeful, and promising are the words that I use frequently to describe, or the words that I use frequently to describe the buildings as I enter them. We have a safe school environment. This past December, we conducted a survey of our Lincoln Park students K through 12. We asked them the question, I feel safe and cared for in school. The students had to respond with a yes or no. This resulted in over 90% of our students responding with a yes answer. Our schools are safe and our students feel that. We have and continue to put forth a substantial effort to educate our students that kindness, not violence, is the path to the promised land. That a compliment, not an insult, is the key to happier environments. We continue to teach our students conflict resolution strategies and offer them support when they don't know how to solve their problems. All students deserve to go to a school in, to go to school in a safe and supportive environment. This is important for me, and it's certainly important to all those students and their families. Financially, the Lincoln Park Public Schools are actually in very, very good shape. We currently have over 15% of our operating expenditures in fund equity. Our expenditures are below our revenue, and there's a dedicated commitment to being fiscally responsible with all future expenses. I am proud of our labor organizations and their leadership. We continue to work together to keep this school district financially healthy. This is common ground that, is fiscally, that if a fiscal responsible Lincoln Park Public Schools is good for us, it's good for everyone. And that certainly means our families, our community, and our students. We have the best opportunity in measurable history to make positive and long-lasting change to our school system and the city of Lincoln Park. The city and the schools have undergone a lot of change lately and are both actively involved in raising the expectations and quality of the product that we produce. In the case of the school district, that means a high-performing, college and career-ready student that is proud of their Lincoln Park home and their education. We have a strong and promising relationship with the city. Mayor Carnes is a solid man of integrity, loyalty, honesty, and most importantly, in my opinion, heart. He is a dedicated man that is caring and loves this city and its residents. I am proud to work with him as we strengthen our partnership with the city. The second question we asked ourselves, what are our challenges? There are several, as you can imagine. I could speak all day to the numerous challenges that we face, the challenges that all school districts face, and the challenges that all public bodies face, and heartbreakingly, the challenges that our families are facing each and every day. Instead, I will focus on just a few that have a wide-reaching impact on how we do business here in the Lincoln Park Schools. They heavily influence our decisions, and in some cases, even our ability to react. Number one, the fact that our limited funding is always in jeopardy of being reduced. The genuine fear of the financial impact of the tragic water crisis in Flint 
and the impending financial cliff facing the Detroit public schools. The money to help these worthy causes is going to have to come from somewhere. As a school official, I am fearful that this could mean future cuts or lack of an increase to school funding in the near and distant future. These two situations are epic and need attention immediately. I am not here to cast blame, and that really is not my, the task at hand. Both of these causes need help, and I support them getting it. There are countless children and families that have been and continue to be emotionally and physically damaged by what is happening in these two locations. However, our school district children and families of Lincoln Park need the continued financial support of this state if we are going to be effective and provide our students and this community the same level of education that is seen in other communities. Each of our students deserve the best that we can give them, and they certainly deserve at least the same as what neighboring communities and schools are so blessed to be able to provide. Number two, a second challenge that we have is an increase in student needs. As the country is still recovering from the economic downturn, Lincoln Park is no different. A growing number of our students and their families have more dependence on the city and schools to help them with their basic needs, such as coats, school supplies, and lunches. This has a major impact on their ability to be successful in school and in most cases even be prepared for or even get to school. As the need grows, our resources are being diverted to help support these needs. While these needs are essential and we are more than happy to help, they still result in the financial and human resources pie being divided even further. Thirdly, enrollment declines in student population in Michigan and especially Wayne County are shrinking. Student population is directly linked to school funding in the state of Michigan. While we have been lucky to have experienced recent steady and even growth in enrollment the last few years, the fact remains that if we lose students, we lose funding. The funding model in Michigan is problematic in that a sudden loss of students cannot be solved quickly in terms of finances. School districts cannot cut enough staff to match the loss of students. For example, in the Lincoln Park schools, if we lost 60 students, it seems reasonable that I could lay off two teachers. I mean, that would be two classes of 30 students, right? Well, unfortunately, it is almost impossible to think that a loss of 60 students would be concentrated in just one grade. More than likely, it is over the entire pre-K through uh, post-secondary school system. This means that classes would just go from 30 students in a class to 26 in almost every case. So the absolute majority of the time, a school district would not be able to lay off any staff to help recoup the loss of funding. However, for sake of argument, let's say that it did work out that we could lay off the two teachers affected by the loss of students. In fact, let's even assume that I could lay off my two most expensive teachers. In LP, we would still come up $175,000 short. This is basic math in a problematic school funding system. There have been discussions recently in Lansing to address this problem, and I welcome those. Our current school funding model is flawed, and we must find a way to make sure that appropriate funding finds its way to the areas that need it most. Targeted school funding aimed at addressing critical areas must be a part of our state school funding model if Michigan is going to be a top 10 state in 10 years. The students of Lincoln Park deserve at least that. So we know what we know we do well, and we know what our challenges are, so time for our third question. What are we going to do about it? Currently, we are undergoing, undergoing an unprecedented systems overhaul that we are calling the Lincoln Park Blueprint. This includes overhauls of how we do everything. This includes the recruitment, hiring, and retention of employees. We must find, hire, and keep the very best employees we can find. We need to ensure that our students are exposed to high-quality people that care about them, their family, and their future. As I said, we have fantastic people in LP. This is our bedrock. However, the workforce is changing, and our ability to find those high-quality people is becoming more challenging. We must have systems in place to be sure that the good ones come through our door and that we don't let them get away. We must seize the opportunity to acquire highly skilled talent. Next, we are raising performance and achievement expectations of our academic programs. I'll be frank with you. Our student performance needs to get better. While we have shown pockets of promise, we are not where we need to be overall. The good news is that we are and continue to overhaul our curriculum and are ensuring that our educators have the resources and training they need to be successful. We are laser focused on improving achievement. This is no joke. We must and we will be a high achieving school district. I will not rest until our school district is able to meet the needs of all of our students because of the fine academic programming that we offer. We are changing how we deliver instruction to ensure that all students get what they need when they need it. And when I say all, I mean all. This includes our students with special needs, our English language learners, and those students that struggle to fit into traditional public education. For the most part, schools and instruction look the same as they did when my grandfather returned from the Korean War. Meanwhile, nothing else looks the same. 
So while there are many solid and quality instructional practices that stand the test of time, there are also new and innovative methods that are much more engaging and relevant for our students. We are rethinking education here in Lincoln Park. We are pushing the envelope and we are willing to do things differently as long as they provide the best opportunities for our students. They are our center, they are our focus, and they are the reason that we are going to stay committed to rapidly improving our achievement in this district. We are putting a huge emphasis on the word fidelity. We need to be sure that every one of our classrooms is doing what they are supposed to as the district has trained and expects. This includes providing high levels of support to our staff while necessary or where necessary and making staff adjustments to ensure the highest quality instruction possible is occurring. We are raising the bar of communication with our staff, our students, and our community. We are increasing transparency. Now I say that not because we have not been transparent in the past, but because we can always do better. The more effective our communication and understanding, the more effective the outcome and the positive impact we can have on our students. We are adopting the model to over communicate is to communicate. We need everyone on the same page, in the same book, and in the same library. We need to do this together. We have a distinct focus on the culture and climate in our buildings. We are supporting a positive environment for all students and staff. We are committed to building strong relationships with our students and their families. As I stated earlier, we know our students feel safe in school, but we want them to feel connected to school. Their educational experience needs to be much more than just something that they do during the day. Their social and emotional health is important to us. Their engagement with their schoolwork and their school community is important. We believe in school pride. We believe in getting our students involved in school. There are so many opportunities for our children to become a part of. We are working to make those connections with them and introduce them to programs that they didn't even know existed. As a result, we are increasing our program offerings of before and after school opportunities for all students. A small but mighty example of this is right here in our Lincoln Park High School. And we have a group called the Railbots. Their sponsor, high school teacher Miss Perry, is doing a fantastic job of leading these students through the fascinating experience of building and working with robots. They will compete in their first robotics competition this month. Additionally, we are looking for improvements to our career and technical education offerings and their ability to offer more of our students more real-world work experience. We are also providing improved support to our athletic and performing arts programs to help them achieve high-level performance. We're also installing a high-functioning protocol to monitor and evaluate the success of our new initiatives. We need to determine quickly if something is not working. If it's not, we need to ask the question why. If we can't fix it, we need to abandon it. We need to run a school district that is effective, meets the needs of our community, and is cost-effective. I am a results-oriented person. I believe that nothing really matters unless what you are doing makes a difference. Basically, the proof is in the pudding and less talking, more doing. Well, in the Lincoln Park Public Schools, we are doing all kinds of things. Here are just a few examples of the types of initiatives that we have put in place in just the past two years. The start of the Lincoln Park Schools Education Foundation. This is a nonprofit 501c3 that sole purpose is to raise funds to help support the students and staff of the Lincoln Park Public Schools. The foundation will be able to provide those extra things that our students deserve and need to be successful. We have employees that are currently using payroll deduction to donate to the foundation because they believe in the cause and helping our students. I would be remiss if I did not give them a little plug. Uh, the foundation will be hosting the first annual Rails Rally on June 11, 2016. This is a 5K run slash walk that begins and ends in Council Point Park. More information can be found on the foundation's website at www.lpsef.net. Please support this cause and come out for a healthy morning of running and walking and every dollar goes towards uh, making sure that the students of Lincoln Park Public Schools get everything that they need. We also have a partnership with Wayne Mediation to ensure that each of our schools has an avenue to work with the families of students that are truant. Our goal is to make work with these families to identify barriers that are keeping them from attending school and to get them on a plan that will ensure their children get the education they need. Truancy is a big deal and no student can afford to miss school. We only get so many trips around the sun and the opportunities that they get inside their classrooms each and every single day are important. We need them in class if we are to do our jobs. Wayne Mediation and our building level staff members are working to ensure that our students are physically present in class and learning. We have started two intervention programs. One is called Power Hour and the other is called Boost. These two programs target students that are behind their grade level in grades K through three. These programs provide intensive small group interventions and support to put them on a plan to achieve their way back to grade level. 
We are meeting students at the level that they are at and working strategically and intensely to ensure that they not only achieve, but that they exceed. Lastly, in partnership with the Wayne County Community College Downriver Campus, we have started the Lincoln Park Middle College. This program offers students the opportunity to earn an associate's degree while attending Lincoln Park High School. The best part is that these students can do this free of charge, a free college education while attending Lincoln Park Public Schools. Let me restate that, a free college education while attending Lincoln Park Public Schools. We are proud to offer this gift to our students and more importantly, we are proud of the students that are taking advantage of that fantastic opportunity. I started this district in 1919, uh, 1999. I've seen the school district go through so many changes. I have witnessed the city go through various forms of leadership and direction. I, like you, have witnessed the changes in our region. However, I'm excited to say that the Lincoln Park Public School District is poised to break through and be the regional leader in educational excellence it deserves to be. We are the 69th largest school district in our state out of 540 public school districts. We are relevant and we are important to the education community. I do not take that lightly. We need to be seen as an educational leader. However, we have to earn it. Through the strategies, initiatives, overhauls, and dedication that I have outlined here today, I am confident that we will earn the reputation of excellence that should be the Lincoln Park Public Schools. The humbling part of this whole thing is that we get to do this in cooperation with the City of Lincoln Park. Mayor Tom Carnes, City Manager Matt Coppler, and the entire City Council have been nothing but supportive of a quality school system here in our city. I am here on behalf of the elected Lincoln Park Board of Education to say that we stand with you. With a continued cooperation between the city and the schools, Lincoln Park can become a destination city downriver. The time is now, the people are in place, and we need the support of this fine community if we're going to make this a reality. I am pleased with the initiatives that we are currently working on, but frankly, I am supercharged about our future. The future of Lincoln Park Public Schools is extremely bright, and I am proud to call myself a rail splitter. Thank you, and I appreciate you taking the time to be with us here today. Go Rails! Thank you, Superintendent Dangerfield. And the rail splitter mantra continues as we welcome the great mayor of the great city of Lincoln Park, rail splitter, Lincoln Park High School class of 1976. Please welcome Mayor Tom Carnes. All right. Thank you, Ed. Tell you what, following Mr. Dangerfield in the speech is difficult. Is, um, I'm sure that the future of the Lincoln Park schools are in good hands after hearing the, the programs that are all set to go. Uh, before I get get too started here, I wanted to thank Paul up on the on the lights for doing all this good work for us, and then I want to thank everybody here for attending today. I want to thank the school board and Superintendent Dangerfield and Principal Borg for allowing us to, to, take, to have this event here. It was my idea, sort of, but uh, as with ideas, I get sometimes a lot of other people have to do the follow-up on that. But it's been 40 years since I've been really in this auditorium, and as Ed mentioned earlier, it is truly a magnificent uh, uh, facility. It is the same as I remember 40 years ago, and I do concur that I wish that we could have more events here at the same rate, though, Terry. <laughs> My thanks also to the junior ROTC led by Sergeant Major Menzies for the presentation of the callers. They will be traveling to Fort Knox, Kentucky tomorrow to take part in a in a competition, a drill competition. So we wish them success down. We wish them success down there. Also, special thanks to the Excel and the Interact clubs for volunteering to help out the programs and to take care of business. And also to the the Rotary Club, the Lincoln Park Rotary Club, for sponsoring the event. Though it's not the oldest service club in the city, it's a vibrant club that provides a great value to the city through projects such as the LP Sports Hall of Fame and the State of the City Address. And in case you're wondering what the, the oldest service club, that would be the uh, Exchange Club at Lincoln Park. There is a general rivalry between the two of us, but Lincoln Park is a better city because of the works of both of those organizations. Today is an important day in my family's history, not because I'm up here talking, they see that enough. Um, 
But on March 10th, importance come from what took place 65 years earlier. On March 10th, 1951, my parents were married in a small, small ceremony in Detroit. The place they chose to start their lives together was Lincoln Park. They bought a home on Capitol Street later that year where they stayed for the rest of their lives. The relatively young city was still growing and it was close to downtown and yet far enough away. Housing was affordable and the school system was growing to meet that demand. Everything a family needed could be found within its borders. Lincoln Park was a setting for what I call my parents' wonderful life. Their four children attended Lincoln Park schools and all graduated from the Lincoln Park school system something neither of them had been able to accomplish in their lifetime. Church was Christ the Good Shepherd Church, which was also just beginning. They found Lincoln Park to be a great place to live. This is just one story of the thousands of families that have called Lincoln Park home and the thousands of families that continue to do so. This is my first State of the City address, and as this is my third year as, as mayor, you may think that a little strange, and I guess it is, but. As an explanation, I can only say that the last few years have been interesting for Lincoln Park. Being mayor was akin to being in the driver's seat of a car without a steering wheel or other controls. The car was moving and you could comment on the scenery, but without any say of where you were headed. As most of you are aware, Lincoln Park had had financial concerns. The early retirements in 2003, the revenue sharing reductions from the, from the state starting in 2006, and the drastic fall in home values in 2008 all had a part in our financial decline. See, Lincoln Park really didn't do anything drastically wrong to reach this point. It's just that the amount of income was greatly reduced. The fund balance carried the budget shortfalls for a couple of years, but once gone, other steps had to be taken. Reductions in staffing, wages, and benefits followed as city leaders scurried to adjust to shrinking revenues while maintaining services. So it wasn't enough, and the city faced a deficit. A decision was made to bring in the state treasury department for review of the city's finances. I don't know what the ultimate goal was to have the city go into the receivership, but it seemed to me as bringing the state in was letting the fox into the hen house. A review was conducted and reports submitted. On December 2nd, 2013 in Lansing, a hearing was held to determine if probable financial emergency existed in Lincoln Park. This coincided with my first meeting as, as mayor. The panel citing the unfunded liability of the pensions found that Lincoln Park had a probable financial emergency. This triggered the appointment of a review team to come to Lincoln Park and do a comprehensive study. And in the end, the review found that Lincoln Park had financial emergency. The options for the city were limited to, to basically two. One, work out a consent agreement with Treasury with a plan for the future, or have an emergency manager appointed. There were two other options that were not, uh, would not have fit for the city. So several meetings, a consent agreement was reached with Treasury, um, but it did not find approval with, with the council and therefore mandated that an emergency manager for Lincoln Park be appointed. It's also during this time that our city manager resigned. We, we had quite a mess. But with credit to our workers, the city prepared for the onset of the EM. They were dedicated to work with the EM to make his tenure here as short as possible and get LP back under local control. Brad Coulter was appointed as REM. Mr. Coulter was known to the city as he had been part of the O'Keefe Company that had done research for the review team and had interviewed several employees and members of council. Many changes were in store for us over the eight, next 18 months. I don't agree with all the changes enacted by the EM, but elective officials, as I said, have little to say in emergency management, as has been seen in other communities. The deck is stacked against them. As an example, the EM order for the elimination of health care for retirees was presented. Uh, once presented, mayor and council had 10 days to come up with an alternative plan without using any city resources. That means any computers, copiers, anything with that. If approved by council, if approved by council, the state committee would then make the determination which should, which should prevail. So you're going in, if you have your proposal, you're going into uh, what I call a, a stack deck. Are you going to go with what the emergency manager presented or what, uh, what your council 
who they feel put the city into the emergency uh, thing. And so that did not have a great, great hope for that. As a result, all Lincoln Park retirees and dependents lost their health care benefits, a contractual promise that had been broken. These workers upheld their end, but we left them high and dry, in my opinion. Some of the other changes were far-reaching, such as contracting building department services to safe built and changing the Public Safety Commission to a citizen advisory board. Several individuals benefited with wage increases, which, in my opinion, was not done equitably. Overall, it is my view that, that Lincoln Park did not benefit from the emergency manager experience. Our budget was balanced before the EM came in. The major change was, was taking the money from the retiree health care and putting it towards the pensions. This is not to knock Mr. Coulter. I think that he was a good man, and, and he did what he felt was right. But I feel that we would have done better under an experienced city manager without state oversight. I think also that we'd been given the money spent on various committee studies and reviews, we would have had a budget surplus. In December of last year, Mr. Colt resigned upon completion of his assignment and we came from out of emergency manager control, sort of. I say sort of because on his last day came the final EM orders. The last order, number 16, which is an 18-page document outlining measures to rectify financial emergency and allocation of responsibilities in the event of an appointment of a receivership transition advisory board. That's a mouthful. The order is a mandate for the council and city manager to adopt best financial practices, reporting requirements, and other mandates. Of interest in this is that the city manager now has sole authority to appoint department heads these orders cannot be changed for a period of one year after Lincoln Park exits receivership. So for the next three years, we are, are still under the control of uh, city manager orders. Since January, measure control has returned to the mayor and council with restrictions. All council actions must be in accordance with EM order number 60 and approved by the Re Receivership Transition Advisory Board, or RTAB. The RTAB board meet is once a month, so advanced planning for us now is paramount. This has been a difficult process for everyone involved, but mostly felt by our employees. Pay cuts, loss of holidays, and benefits were rampant. It was a time of working shorthand, <clears throat> shorthand, shorthand shifts with the possibility of job loss and uncertain certain future hanging over them. Yet in these difficult times, our employees shone bright. They performed at a high level, and I'm proud of their efforts during this crisis. And I ask that you personally thank them when you see a worker. We did lose many experienced personnel to better paying cities, and this loss would be hard to replace. Just a few weeks ago, two of our officers had an opportunity to go to a neighboring city. They had been applied, they had applied there and had been accepted. And the call came, and it was time for them to leave, and they made the tough choice of staying here, which I believe is a sign that we're on the turnaround, that they had faith in what is coming for these next couple of years, and they wanted to stay, stay with that. But that was a very brave thing that those officers did. They went, and they could have um, gotten higher pay, but they decided to stay with, stay with us. And I think that they will be rewarded, because we are on the mend. One of the positive things that came out of the EM area was the appointment of a new city manager, Mr. Matt Copper, who is over here. Lincoln Park had been without the services of a city manager since the resignation of Mr. Mariucci some two years before. Mr. Copper has performed admirably since his appointment. His mantra has been, no purchases without a purchase order, no purchase orders without budgeted funds, and holding people responsible. He has ambitious goals for the city for the coming year, to make government more effective and efficient, to enhance public safety, to expand the tax base through a coordinated economic development initiative, and to promote volunteerism in the city. He is working to implement a neighborhood improvement program for the city and was a main component in the work of the 10-year revitalization committee with Councilman Candace and Dardzinski and several citizens who uh, spent several meetings putting together this plan. And he has also continued a program that the emergency manager has started with a monthly DPS meeting with Councilman DeSanto and, and Kelsey 
to keep the mayor and council on board with what is going on in the Department of Public Service. And speaking of the Department of Public Service, your department, he's been very busy as well. And John Kazoo, the, the DPS director, and Supervisor Ron Rail have returned public service to the department. Faster responses to emails and calls, doing all to improve customer service. They've completed $600,000 of concrete repairs at city roads and sidewalks, oversaw construction of a new salt dome, sanitary sewer upgrades and repairs totaling $1 million were done, and developed a five-year road repair program spending $1.3 million per year. Now, in the community parks and recreation with Don Cook and Doreen Christian, one senior transport program a senior transport program put 13 passenger bus into operation for the city at no cost through a federal transit grant. And that was huge because uh, the last bus that we had was 2004 and it was in poor operation. The band shall received a much needed facelift through donations and a matching grant, and I'll touch on that later on. The summer concert series has, has returned. And we have partnered through the Community Park and Recreation with Habitat for Humanity and Delta Airlines to construct three new homes on what were vacant lots. Chief Dyer of the Fire Department has been promoting new ideas and finding funding to pay for needed equipment. Through his department's effort, the Fire Department was able to bring new equipment and funding for, a, for several new programs. They received a FEMA grant for a self-contained breathing apparatus, a FEMA grant for all new fire helmets. Two new rescue vehicles were obtained through grants, one an ambulance through FEMA, and one a Chevy Yukon through the CWG funds. A part-time fire inspector position was created and also funded through the CDBG. In the pilot program, fire code inspection team to train six firefighters as fire inspectors to work with the temporary fire inspector and to go out and to do inspections. And it's one thing that we have been a little lax the last couple of years, or not lax, but we just have not been able to get it done. And so now that we will. <clears throat> Chief Waters of the Police Department, along with Deputy Chief Lavis, filled in for Chief Hawk during his illness and took over the department upon Hawk's retirement. The department has been slightly reorganized in that creation of that deputy chief position, which was much needed. Created, or they started the use of, of CompStat. Now what CompStat is, is a computerized program that will show you exactly where a crime has been committed. You'll be able to plot out on a map what type of crimes have been committed at what times and such. And it's that way that you can pinpoint your controls in troubled areas and be able to respond to um, patterns of crime. Second thing that they came up with this year, and it was through Lieutenant Corvera's work, is the COPS Care Program. And this is getting back into the community, getting back in touch with kids, having a picnic, getting to where the relationship with an officer is not one of, one of fear, but of one of, of respect. <clears throat> He's been working with the Michigan Department of Corrections, going after parole violators, the department has, working with neighborhood departments on the team approach, doing crime prevention in hotspot areas with officers going door to door, and through the CDBG funding of this year, returning back to community policing, bringing a community policing officer back. Because it's only through um, an officer going into the community, such as the hot spots, that you're able to determine what is going on in these communities. You go in and to physically speak. And without, if you don't know exactly what the problem is, you don't know how to correct it. And that's what the whole basis for community police is, is all about. Okay. Now, I want to take this, this moment that I feel that I have to remind you about our first responders. That even as we stand here and during the rain tonight and the rain tomorrow, all of our first responders are going to be out there. They're always out there. They're always responding for us with, with, with little complaint. If there's a job to do, it's with little fanfare. They find the time to do necessary training and they come back again and do it again tomorrow and they do it again tomorrow. And um, these 
Ladies and gentlemen deserve our special thanks, and if you would not mind showing your response or your, your pleasure for them, or your appreciation, that's the word I'm looking for. <clears throat> Lincoln Park has been um, the benefit of what I call of two we had two great interns, or still do in, in some firm have two great interns. Uh, the first one was, was Giles Tucker came in under the emergency manager, and he proved to be a, a go-getter, always trying to get some problems solved, always sticking his uh, nose in and trying to get things fixed. It was his efforts that brought the $20,000 to the band shell and get, to get that repaired and into the park um, adoption and the MC5 tribute were also, were also things that, that he worked on. The DDA and the EDC recognized his talents and he was hired as a full-time director. So he is attempting to make Lincoln Park business friendly. If you have a need for a building, he will try to hook you up with someone in the city who has the space and vice versa. He has established a directory of available businesses and these listings are available through a link on the DD, the Downtown Development Authority page, and very soon a Lincoln Park Business e-newsletter will be making its debut. There are several projects that are going on. The first is what the Pavilion Project at 1673 Fort. It's the Dorsey Building, which is right next door, or close by the uh, the Park Restaurant. That building will be torn down very soon. I'm wondering if I have to be in class here. Just <laughs> That building will be torn down very soon, and uh, we're going to have a pressed cement foundation put in, and eventually a pavilion will go in. This is going to be the new home for the farmer's market. This is going to be the home for art displays, cultural events, and anything that we put a mind to. The second annual chocolate walk was a success just uh, last month. And on uh, May 7th will be our Cinco de Mayo, the second annual Cinco de Mayo. Part of what the DDA is able to accomplish is it is able to provide assistance to businesses in the downtown area to put a new face on their buildings, a new facade. And to that end, it's a, it's a half grant. So if you get something done for $10,000 and you qualify, then the DDA may, it will give you $5,000 towards that. In this past year, $87,000 was done to that, that purpose. And then there is, um, I want to mention Treasurer Luco has been busy with transitions and shortage of staff members. I mention this because she is a full-time worker because she needs to be a full-time worker with the shortages that are, that are in there. To help with lines and make it easier for, to pay, we entered into sort of an, an arrangement with the Lincoln Park Community Credit Union. So if you find long lines at City Hall and you want to pay your taxes or you want to pay your water bill, you can go over to the Lincoln Park Community Credit Union and whether you are a member or not, you can pay for that there. Um, you don't have to be a member to do that, but. They'd like you to become a member, but that's not the purpose. The purpose of them doing this was to help us and to help people who wanted to pay their bills on, the, on a timely basis. We have uh, our city clerk Donna Breeding who's in the audience today. We just had a hectic week with the, at the elections. They've been getting more work done with fewer staff. Donna's the one that makes sure everything gets done according to Hoyle, and she's not afraid to tell you about it either. We have Historical Museum Director or Creator Jeff Day here. Those of you that know Jeff know that he has been doing a fabulous job for us in the city. The MC5 event, the concert that was put on last year was uh, uh, unbelievable. It brought new attention to Lincoln Park and it, it, was, it was a good time and nicely done. There's been, there have been exhibits of historic families and one Lincoln Park graduate from 1977, um, Bill Morrison will be coming in October for a show of his work. You might remember Bill from uh, art director of the cartoon Futurama, and he's also done his own line of comic books, 
and he has um, done much work for the Simpsons and for the Disney movies. So our Lincoln Park Library is celebrating its 91st year this year. Summer reading programs will be starting very soon. Now, since September, I have had the been very fortunate to spend every day here at the high school. That's a learning experience, and for both for both sides too. And when you talk to the the classes, and I think that was that first day, and I mentioned. I was the mayor also, and they were just overjoyed. They had really no, <laughs> no understanding, or uh, they weren't very thrilled about it at all. So there's a little bit of a, a comeuppance for me, but with students, you have to learn, you have to earn their respect, and that and that is coming along. I've been learning every day since I've been, since I have been here. And what I have learned most is that the school is filled with many talented students. And because of these, we have very high hopes for our future. The school system is extremely important to the future of our city. One cannot be successful without the, without the other. Now, to that end, we want to work together in ways that, that we both can benefit from, as Mr. Dangerfield has spoken about. See, the city has been on the receiving end, and several schools were utilized in our town hall meeting. And I look forward to working with the school district and the superintendent to save both of us money. Another partner I look to nurture in the future is the Lincoln Park Chamber of Commerce. It makes sense to me to bring their officers to City Hall, where they can work with the city management, the Downtown Development Authority, and be readily accessible to visitors. I believe that that I can announce that, that they're going to be coming here, the directors in the audience, and I spoke with Matt, but it just makes perfect sense, perfect sense for me to, uh, for this to happen. Because we need to, to work together, and you want to facilitate that to make it easier to get together and not more difficult. If we're all on the same page recruiting new businesses in, then the chamber, chamber wins, the city wins, the downtown area the wins too. We have several grand events in towns and new ones being experimented with to place Lincoln Park as a destination. Among these are the revitalized banjo concerts. This year the concerts will not just be on Thursday, but several will be on weekends and they look to have a, a great show. I think Ed will be playing August 25th if you want to mark your calendars. The continuation of the Memorial Day Parade and the committee that does a fabulous job of putting that parade on every year. The Farmer's Market, which has been battling and battling year after year and were the recipients of a grant this past year that's going to allow them to, to offer more things that are here. Um, the Penny Drop, even though um, I wasn't the biggest fan for that, it attracted a lot of attention and it, it brings excitement to the city. And Comic Con, Lincoln Park Days, and in Lincoln Park Days this year, we decided to maybe bring a little excitement there. We have uh, rock icon Mitch Ryder is going to be performing in this August. So it's something to look forward to uh, for your Mitch Ryder fans. There are many service groups in town that I did not mention, but I want to that I'm thankful for their work here. The Eagles, the Moose, the Masons, the Knights of Columbus are all key to our success. And don't forget that the Knights will be doing a, a Tootsie Roll sale this, this very weekend. I think that we are on the mend. I just received my property assessment and in opening up, I saw an increase, which actually made me glad. I hope many of you see an increase in your property values also, because that means good things for the city. We don't have a miracle cure coming for our city. The pension millage has been voted down twice. We are going for a Headley override under pursuant to order number 60. But other than that, we are going to have to learn to live within our budget, looking for revenue from all, from all sources such as grants. Our roads are in need of repair. We had a $20 million bond approval, approved, but but using it would be proved too, too costly due to the interest rates and our, uh, our bond status. 
There's a road plan that's uh, recently developed by the city manager and DPS that was approved by council. And it may be uh, a while before your particular road is repaired, but we will lay it out when it is to be done. There are two musts for us in the city, and they are the two plazas that had their heyday in the, in the 60s and 70s, the Sears Plaza and what I call the J.C. Penney Plaza. It's imperative for us that we fill and have these locations occupied. And to that end, uh, the DDA director, the EDC director, and all of our efforts have been put towards finding out what is going on, encouraging it, supporting it any way that we have. That's, that's, that's number one. Second thing what it was our roads I talked about. We have a good thing in that we have a cleaner city this year. Um, Mayor Kraus and council before went for the garbage containers to be on the sides. I think that that has proven to be a great thing for our city. It has kept it clean. And if we can just get everybody to keep it on the uh, odd of the street, we'll be, doing, we'll be doing very well on this. I would very much like to see recycling start in our city also in a similar type container but smaller so that if you did this um, and if we were to be avid recyclers, we would cut the amount of money that we have to pay to Riverview each month. We look to do this at no cost to, to the citizens, that is my hope, and, and see if we can get this to work out. I think that it is the, it is the right thing to do. Lincoln Park has some businesses who have stuck with us over the years and are a big part of, of LP. We have uh, the owner of the three McDonald's here, who is, uh, I always mess up your name, Mr. Chapawada, I think, is, a, is is right there and is there today as a big supporter for the city of Lincoln Park. We have Calder's Dairy. We have Loveland's Hallmark. Now Loveland's Hallmark I want to point out because that is in the uh, what I call the J.C. Penny Plaza or the Lincoln Park Plaza. They have continued to be a successful business when nobody else was around there and they're waiting for help to come and so that's what I'm waiting for too because we want to preserve that and have. I was asked by somebody who did a, um, was doing a study on what we needed in that location. And what we need is, in my opinion, is a place where we can have a sit down meal and maybe a cocktail where we can take our family uh, shopping or we just need something to, to be there, something to, to attract us. Um, Busan's Appliance, Petri Bike Shop, Papas Company, Sears, Park Tire, Painter Supply, Kroger's, the brewery, and many others. A lot of businesses, <clears throat> new businesses such as Save a Lot and the Lot Project that have made a big difference in those blocks of downtown. And if you haven't been in our downtown area, I encourage you to go and see, particularly at night when the lights are, are lit up on the old Lincoln Park show. We are a great city. We have a great housing stock at reasonable rates. We have business opportunities that put you out in the middle of the crossroads of Down River, minutes from almost anywhere. We're becoming to be the place for authentic Mexican food either already prepared or with the ingredients to take home. We are close to everything downtown has to offer but with cheaper housing. Our leaders are being aggressive in promoting the city and helping those who call. Our workers are dedicated to customer service. Our citizens have been supportive of this process and I ask you to continue to be. We are not the same city we were 15 years ago, let alone 65 years ago. In many ways we are stronger. As uh, was said in stripes, we are a lean, mean fighting machine. I ask all of you to get involved in some way. A church, service group, club, as Uncle Sam says, we need you. My goal is simple. I want Lincoln Park to be the city that my parents sought out to be the place to live their lives and raise their family. I believe that Lincoln Park is a great city that can become greater. My parents raised their family here. I have raised my family here. And I think it's a good place for you all to come and do the same. Thank you.
thank you, Mayor Carnes, and once again, thank you, elected officials who have joined us here, the businesses that honor us by their daily cooperation, the churches, the ministry, the fraternal groups, the civic clubs that have all gotten together time after time to bail us out when we needed it, and we still need your help today. And uh, there were some subliminal messages about uh, the emergency manager. Many of you have not had a chance to meet the new city manager. We'd like to have him stand. He's at the end of the row here. Matt Coppler, who's truly experienced in municipal governance. <laughs> and Matt understands what it takes to make a city work, and he understands that the city is an element made up of all of its components, including the employees who have, as the mayor said in this city, continue to give to keep their nose to the grindstone in spite of the fact that many times they were pushed into that grindstone by the emergency manager. So ladies and gentlemen, let's have a round of applause for everybody here. Thank you all. We'll see you in the room for refreshments. Go Rail Splitters.